We'll learn how to use the Levels tool in Capture One Pro. The Levels tool, it contains the histogram, which is represented here as well. The main histogram, the RGB graph, is represented by the grayscale graph. And it also has the individual RGB channels of red, green, and blue. They're also here as well if you want to see it individually. And looking at the graph from left to right goes from shadows to the highlights with the darkest part being zero and the brightest part being 255. And this is the midtones right here in the middle. And now you can see this is the input value which targets the black point, And this is the input value of the white point. And these are the output values. We'll talk about that in a minute. So this image right here looks pretty flat. It's more on the bright side. It's lacking a lot of shadows or dark areas. You can see here, it should be a little bit darker. These feathers here of this blue footed booby should be a little bit darker. And the main reason is looking at this graph right here, this is the darkest part. It's not even at zero, zero is right here. So what I need to do is map the black point to here and I map it by changing the input value and moving it to the right and you can see it's being adjusted and while I adjust the black point the midtones or the midtone area also gets adjusted input value of the white point doesn't get adjusted so you can see here's the after image I'll show you the before and you can see the shadows got darker by me moving or sliding the black point Another thing I can do is I can also change the input value of the white point, but I don't think it's necessary in this image. Another option is I can reset it and I can auto correct the levels tool or the histogram by clicking on this magic wand tool and it automatically change the black point, the white point, as well as the midtones. If I move this midtone slider to the right, it becomes darker. This whole area is darker. If I move it to the left, becomes brighter. So I'll just reset that and it looks pretty good. One thing you need to be careful of is when you're changing the levels tool, especially if you're using the automatic tool right here is clipping. I'll turn on the clipping indicators by pressing command E and you can see here this part is blown out. I could blow it out more by moving it to the left, but that's not what I want to do. What I'll do is just reset the white point and right here I can change the output value so I can decrease the brightest part by changing the output value going right here. So you can see the clipping is gone. Depending on your artistic touch, sometimes clipping is okay. So don't worry too much about it. But just to give you a better example of the output value and the input values, I can make this image a lot darker by moving the black point here. Let me turn off the clipping indicator or I can make this image a lot more brighter. I can also remove the brightness by changing the output value and it becomes darker. So these kind of like act in interactive ways or they're a little bit complements this and this and this output value of the black point and the input value of the white point. I can go to this other image right here and you can see this graph is a little bit more easy to read because the highlights are missing right here. It's very flat and there's also flat on the shadow side. So I can correct this by moving this white point to about here and I can correct this by moving the black point here and let's see the before and after. So you can see there's a lot more contrast or the contrast is better. And the good thing about the levels tool is you can target the contrast manually instead of doing it automatically with the contrast slider in the exposure tool. Now I'm just going to reset this. Another thing I can show you is I can target the black point and white point by using these eyedropper tools. So I can click on here and let's say this should be the darkest part. So I can click here, then I can choose this and I can say this should be the whitest part and it looks pretty good. I would still reduce the black point to about here and move the white point here. So the levels tool is pretty easy to understand when you're looking at the overall RGB graph of the histogram, but it gets a little bit confusing when you start playing with the individual RGB channels. And I'll show you that right now. 
So this image that I took in uh, Patagonia, you can see it's on the yellowish side with a yellow color cast and some blue here or some purple. Some people use the individual RGB channels to correct the color cast. In my case, I'm going to use it to color grade the image. So I'm in the blue channel right now. And remember in the RGB channel, it goes from shadows to highlights. But the blue channel is or the individual RGB channels, it could be confusing because if I move this to the left, it adds blue to the highlights. But if I move this to the right, it doesn't add blue to the shadows. It adds yellow. So remember, it goes from yellow to blue. Yellow is the complement of blue and magenta is the complement of green and cyan is the complement of red. So if I move this slider, this input slider of the blue to the left, it adds blue to the highlights. But if I move the output slider, it adds yellow to the highlights. And the opposite is true for the shadows. It adds the blue to the shadows. So sometimes you need to play around with these sliders just to remember what they do in the individual RGB channels. So I'm going to color grade this by adding blue to the image, to the highlights. And I'm going to keep it at around 140. So if we look at the sky here, it has a nice purplish hue to the highlights and even to the shadows a little bit because the midtones were pushed to the left. Now I'm going to mimic this color grade on this variant image right here. So just remember this blue, the input value is at 140 for the highlights. Nothing was done to the red or green. Now, on this image, I'm going to mimic this image as well. I'm going to make it a little bit more purple. So I'm going to make sure this is selected. And to make it more purple, I need to add more blue. But I can add more blue by using the red and green channels. And just to give you an example of what they do, on the red channel, if I move the input slider of the highlights or the white to the left, it adds red. But if I change the input value of the shadow, it adds cyan, which is the complement. And the opposites happen with the output values. And let me just make sure this is reset. And same thing with green. If I change the input value of the highlights, it adds green. And if I change the input value of the black point right here, it's going to add what color is it going to add? It's going to add magenta. And then it's going to do the opposite for the output values. So in order to make this image more purplish, I need to add blue like I did in the top image. Blue is made with cyan and magenta. So it's a combination of cyan and magenta. So I need to add, let's say, cyan here. So I need to add cyan to the highlights. Remember, I changed the highlights in this blue, in this blue image or in the blue slider in the blue channel right here. I added blue to the highlights. So in this bottom image, I need to add blue to the highlights. And I can do that by combining cyan and magenta. So in the green slider or in the green channel, I need to add, let me see, I need to go back to the blue channel in the top image and it was at 140 right here on the input so here on the bottom i need to go to the green i need to go to the output value of the highlights and add 140 so now you can see the magenta is added and now i just need to add the cyan and if i add cyan i'll keep it around 140 and you can see the image looks almost similar but the exposure value is a little bit different this image on the top is brighter and the image on the bottom is darker. And the main reason is the RGB channels are not equal. You can see the red graph looks different than the green graph and the blue graph looks entirely different. But this is just an example of how you can play with the RGB channels to color grade in the levels tool in Capture One. And I hope that makes sense for you guys. And if you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. And as always, live easy, sleep breezy, and stay lovely.